Hello, good neighbors. It's Matt. I just wanted to give everybody a tour of uh, the 1990 reapportionment library that I uh, developed on my website. So if you go to buffalocontroller.net slash 1990, uh, I built a collection of articles that I've kind of accumulated through doing research at the Erie County Public Library. So with the microfilms. Uh, so I wanted to jump on and just make a short video, try to explain it as, as best as I understand. Um, Really, the, the main points to understand is every 10 years, um, federal law requires that the city redraw um, the districts to align with population. So every 10 years, uh, census numbers come out and the Common Council needs to redo the maps so that each district has an equal number of people. Um, so in 1991, uh, the reapportionment was based on the 80s. So some of the census um, numbers are actually pretty staggering. So one of the big takeaways in the 1990 reapportionment um, was really the demographic change the city saw over the over the 80s. So so the white city population dropped from 70.5% in 1980 to 64.7% in 1990. So whites made up 78.7% in the 1970s. So um, essentially this is the most stark paragraph here since 1970. So between 1970 and 1990 more than 150,000 whites uh, left the city while the black population remained relatively unchanged. Uh, so pretty staggering numbers. Uh, so these are kind of the districts uh, at the time. So you can kind of see, look at this Fillmore district. It's like solely focused on the east side. It's totally different than what we see now in 2023. Uh, so that was kind of the the first thing is that the the council was redoing the maps because of the changing census um, information. So that was in April. Let's see. And a really a, another kind of major theme of this reportion was the Hispanic population. So uh, the Hispanic population in the city, there are some claims that they were uh, gerrymandered in the 1980. I haven't gone back in the microfilms and gone there yet, although when I have time, I'll, I'll do that. Um, but uh, really, one of the big stories was the Hispanic vote had it increased uh, between 1980 and 1990. And what th that voting block, what they were concerned about, is that their population was kind of split between the Ellicott and the Niagara district. So they wanted that, you know, the growing Hispanic vote to be part of one district to kind of hit, give them a larger voice in uh, city government. So that was another big theme. Uh, yeah, so it's really started with the Hispanics and then, uh, let's see. Yeah, and the other thing was just how controversial this, uh, this was. The city essentially got sued. I mean, sued, there's a big fight. So let me see if I can find. The major group was this April 27th. Uh, in the article was the Hispanics for fair and equitable reapportionment. Um, and one of the, uh, one of the start quotes uh, I can show you down here. So basically the common council was asking this person, Hispanic person, the council, uh, to explain why dividing the, dividing the population into two district groups were bad. And he started saying how, you know, the Hispanic population didn't have a voice. They were trying to address things like, um, crime, like, uh, drugs in their community and the one of the committee members at point back council said that has nothing to do with representation that's the character of the people <laughs> uh so that was a, a quote that stuck out and yeah and really the count the plan that the council came up with uh really another major thing was the fillmore district so the fillmore district uh in 1980 was nearly 50 50 split between uh white and black and then even though the city lost 40,000 whites over the 80s so you had this massive white flight where white people left the city um the fillmore district as part of the council's plan or the committee's count uh, that the council appointed increased the population uh from 50 percent white to 62 percent white so it gave the fillmore district a majority white share um which was really an effort to keep Dave Franzek, who's the current council member, um, in power. And coincidentally, somehow Dave Franzek's 
father, Stan Franzak, who is a was a former council staffer, was actually on the committee. So somehow, the father of the Fillmore council member was on the committee that was drawing the map that gave yeah gave him a better chance of winning the election. And we'll see how how that plays out over the course of the summer. So there's essentially three plans that were proposed in 1991 at this public hearing. So there's really three plans. There's the Citizens Advisory Committee, so kind of the official council committee, uh, that they had a plan that would significantly strengthen the white vote in the Fillmore District while reducing the district's black population. Then there was a second, an alternative plan that was offered by Ellicott Council Member James Pitts um, that kind of restored much of the black population to the Fillmore District. And then there was this third plan, so submitted by representatives of the city's Hispanic community, um, so the Hispanics for equitable and fair reapportionment. They redrew several boundaries so that a majority of the city's Hispanic community resided in one district, which, the, which was the Niagara District. Uh, and it was contentious from the start. So three groups threatened a lawsuit if the Citizens Committee proposal was adopted by the council. So you had the, the city's blacks, the Hispanic population, and the Republican Party threatened to, <laughs> to sue. Uh, and it's a funny thing, at the same time, this, there was a Soviet delegation that was studying the operations of City Hall. So um, one of the fun things about research is when you're doing things, you just kind of go on these weird tangents. So like the Soviet delegates at this time, <laughs> as the Soviet Union was collapsing, uh, were stu coming to City Hall to study. Um, maybe City Hall, looking back, Soviet City Hall uh, s studied <laughs> the Soviet operations. Because I feel very much so like we're in a... A Soviet Union type moment where our state is collapsing slow and we all kind of know it. Another thing was May 14th. May 14th, the same page is this residents joining to fight against crime. So you zoom in here. Who's this right here? Buffalo Police Officer Barbara, Barbara Williams. Who is Barbara Williams? Well, now she's Barbara Miller Williams, so she's the actual controller of the city. So here she is in 1991 as a police officer. At the public hearing, so the, the council holds a public hearing on May 23rd. And plans to report to the city are racist, unfair, and illegal. More than 35 speakers. So they had 35 speakers and 300 people attended this hearing. Which, now in 2023, we had the same hearing was one person. One person was in the chambers. 20 years ago, 1990, 300 people. And Dave Franzek was the chair of this year's commission. So he... The connection between the Franzek gerrymandering 1990 and then 2023 are that common string is there. So yeah, people were very upset. I think I was just blown away at the the participation in this was there is lots of people involved. Uh, so May 24th, and I have to do some more research and go. I couldn't find articles on those dates, but May 24th the council approves the plan, and then May 30th the mayor signs the plan. Uh, and they were in a rush to get this thing approved because in 1990, primaries, they were competing against, there was a primary and a general election that year. So they were redistricting while people were petitioning. So they were in a rush to get this through, trying to get it done by mid-June to align with the September primaries. Uh, and that ends up being kind of crazy and very confusing while I'm reading it. It seems very confusing at the time. So then again, June 12th. This is when kind of the drama starts. So Pitt seeks to undo the new council districts. Uh, so you have James Pitt, the former Ellicott Council District, starts really, um, at this point, collecting signatures for a petition. He wanted to do a city referendum, which is essentially the city, or the citizens of the city vote on like a new law or a revision to the charter. So at this point in mid-June, you know, as primary season is starting, you have the Ellicott uh, Council member Pitt's trying to get a referendum and collecting signatures. So June 27th, 1921, the Hispanic voters. So the Hispanic voters now come in and sue um, the council to void the adopted redistricting plan. And eventually at one point the NAACP comes in and sues. So you have all these all these different competing factions while primary season's going on uh, suing. July 17th, so this is when James Pitts files so he throws the, the 1991 Common Council election into disarray. So 20 minutes before the deadline, so I think at 11.39, a petition with 9,000 signatures on it challenging the redistrict planning. So a referendum at that time only required 3,900 votes, so 5% of the voting electorate. At the same time, the NAACP, CPA, 
NAACP comes in, files a lawsuit at the same time. So you have mid-July, as the primaries are going on, on uh, candidates are collecting signatures, just throws it into disarray by, by filing suit. And this creates a controversy. So Pitts files this referendum with the city clerk. So the city clerk is appointed by the council. So you have, essentially, the clerk's bosses are the council because they approved them. So now... Dave Franzek, the Fillmore Council member. So remember, all these people are running for election while this is going on. He uh, vows to fight, uh, fight uh, foes. So he, he tends to take the bull by the horns. I believe in fighting for the the integrity of of the district. So he sends a letter to the city clerk Charles Maho the third. He, f you know, files an objection to the list of petitions that the clerk needs to approve. So that happens too. So you basically have the council members all jumping into this kind of lawsuit. The city clerk, who's kind of just an average, just employee at City Hall. I mean, he's a big deal at City Hall, but kind of behind the scenes guy, Charles Malo. He he's now in the middle of this controversy, and he he doesn't like that at all. He'd rather just kind of do his job. So the mayor, the council, and the board of elections. All these lawsuits have been going on in state court. They win a transfer to the federal court. So a federal court um, is now asked to do the hearings. During the whole race, it's very unclear which maps are going to be used. Are the 1980 maps going to be used, or are the 1990 new districts? So the council approves a, a, a new plan to do new districts, but at the same time, you have these people petitioning, and it remains unclear which maps are actually going to be used. So uh, a council district likely remains the same. So at this point, they think they're going to use the old, the old districts. Uh, while people are still suing. Court clears away for new for new city elections. So now you have the state coming and said, no, you're gonna use the, the new the new districts in the in the upcoming election. And kind of the month of August, you have these lawsuits going back and forth. August 20th, 1991, Soviet lawmakers in Ukraine in the news. So some things change, some things stay the same. But yeah, I guess we can talk about Ada, Ada Dean. Essentially challenging Dave Franzak. So she ends up, they end up using the old maps. So Ada Dean runs for Fillmore Council. She's in the Fillmore primary. But she technically lives in Maston because they changed her uh, house into a new district. So if she, she ends up running, and Dave Franzak ends up winning pretty handily with the new districts that increased uh, the majority... Um, white district. So you would have had a situation if she had a one where she would have not technically been able to serve and probably would have got sued because she was representing a district that she didn't live in. Another funny thing that happens is um, the Reverend Al Sharp Sharpton at some point makes an appearance. Uh, so Al Sharpton, yeah. Sharpton to protest, you know, council remapping plan. So the Reverend Al Sharpton Sharpton comes to to town to at some point bring national attention to the reapportionment in Buffalo. So pretty crazy it seems like uh, how it got to be. So fast forward to the race. Essentially the new districts end up being used. So the districts at the committee they file s six lawsuits. So six lawsuits end up getting filed against the Common Council. The Common Council's new plan that uh, splits up the Hispanic vote and in increase the share of white voters in Fillmore ends up being used three days. So September 9th, three days before the primaries, when they actually get uh, confirmation that of what maps are going to be used. So Pitts ends up filing a freedom of speech, uh, a freedom of speech at the federal level lawsuit, and his his redistricting plea essentially gets rejected. And this is when Pitts kind of accepts the reality three days before the primary. So up until Three days before the primary, they didn't know what maps they were using. End up using the Common Council maps. Franzek ends up winning 80-20, so it wasn't even wasn't even close. Yeah, Dave Franzek ends up winning 80-20 uh, with um, three, 3,300 votes to Ada Dean's 858. Uh, so that's a little overview of the 1990 reapportionment. Uh, if you're interested, uh, leave a question in the comments. I, I can maybe try to articulate some things better. I have more research to do. Um, but buffalocontroller.net slash 1990, and you can kind of read these articles yourself. So uh, thank you. And write in Austin for City Controller in 2023.